Chemsec is uh, having this marketplace. So of course, if there are already available substitutes, you can choose to to uh, try with one of those. Uh, but we at the Swedish Center for Chemical Substitution, we are helping companies and uh, public authorities and public sector uh, with uh, with substitution too. So I would like just to continue here and uh, we ECA, the European Chemicals uh, Agency, they uh, uh, made a study this summer and in this study they asked companies whether what is the main driver for substitution and uh, regulation was absolutely the most important thing, different parts of the, uh, of the regulation, but anyway. But also many companies answered that soft pulls are important. So customer demand on corporate sustainability policy, public image or new market opportunities uh, were also important uh, drivers for substitution for companies. So next slide, please. So what we are doing, uh, we are informing about how to work with, with substitution and then we use a staircase that uh, uh, also the Swedish Chemical Agency use. And here we, uh, you can think of uh, the way to work with substitution like this, like a staircase. So you start with gathering information about your chemical content. And I suppose that in your case, uh, many of you don't know what is the chemical content of your, uh, your product. So you need to start with gathering that information and then you have to find out whether some of the substances are unwanted or regulate on their way to be regulated or if they are have some hazard um, like cancerogenic or something. Uh, so this is general, it's not just for PFAS. And in this case, I think you know already that PFAS is your focus area. So then you come to the next step. You have to make an inventory to find alternative uh, substances or alternatives to to uh, your PFAS in this product. And in this case, it's important to think about the function, uh, not the only the particular chemical that you have to add another chemical to to get this function. You have to think of it a little bit wider. And uh, as we have heard a lot about um, Necess uh, uh, yeah, unnecessary uses, uh, then uh, I think in this case you should also think about if this uh, add, uh, this chemical is, uh, or if this func function is even needed. Um, then you have to go further. Uh, you go to uh, evaluate uh, your product and uh, in your evaluation you need also to think about the affordability and effectiveness of your your alternative and uh, what is very important too is to document your steps and your decisions in each step so you have you later can come back and uh, find out what was the reason why you took a, a specific decision and of course, if you don't find an alternative, if a marketplace that Chemsec, that Jonathan told about, don't have it or you don't find an alternative anywhere else, you need to develop a new alternative. And that is uh, normally quite a long process. So that is one reason why uh, the chemicals legislation often give you some time. Uh, of course, you would like to, to ban a uh, bad substance at once, but as it takes time to find alternatives, uh, legislation need to have some, um, uh, you, you need some time. Next, please. Thank you. Next. Good. Uh, so I, I said that uh, uh, to to uh, work with substitution, you need to think about several things, and you think uh, you need to think about uh, whether the alternative is safer 
so you don't uh, get this regrettable substitution that we have heard about earlier. Uh, you need to think about uh, the function, how effective or how, how the alternative works. And you also think about, you should think about the affordability, of course. And uh, when we talk about the affordability, you should also include, or in all these uh, aspects, you should, of course, include more um, more things than just what is the price of the alternative compared to to uh, the the substance that you had before because for example if we have to clean up uh, all the sites where we have used pfas uh, it will be extremely expensive uh, and also that cost should actually be included in in your understanding of the affordability so the life cycle perspective that also Ian talked about uh, is important and uh, we uh, also uh, have to think about uh, all different aspects. So please take next slide. So when you are thinking about your uh, finding alternatives, you another uh, it's not the different only the different aspects to to think about, but also what resources are needed to, to find alternatives. And then uh, it's important to think of the experts that you have within the company. Uh, you have uh, maybe chemicals experts, but you can have workers that know uh, different things in, uh, about uh, what works and what doesn't work. You have suppliers. Um, you have also, uh, you can check in databases and publications and scientific journals, of course, and uh, you can get help from technical institutes and uh, you can discuss with the government agencies too. Uh, so you can also ask your, your the users, of course, what and, and uh, involve the users as resources in your work on substitution. So next, please. So what we are doing, the Substitution Center, is that we guide through the substitution staircase. Uh, we help companies with starting their systemani systematic chemical management work. Uh, we have uh, support material for download at our web page. And uh, we have a lot of different tools, resources, and positive substitution lists on our web page. And, uh, of course, you can also ask us and uh, for advice, and we can help you further. So our web page is the substitution center uh, dot se, and we have a lot of material on English in English too. So it's not only in Swedish, but we are paid by the Swedish government, so it's mainly the Swedish uh, companies that we are supposed to support. So we also have some courses and these courses are in Swedish. So if you want to know more or learn about substitution uh, processes, please uh, look at our web page and find out more about our courses. So next, please. Um, OK, so with this, I would say thank you 